Did you remember how we got here? No. You don't remember sitting down? No. I reckon we've been here about ten minutes at least. Really? Well, I've no oh. knowledge of it. My eyes have started working now, and I've, all I've seen the whole time I've been seeing anything at all is that. And do you feel absolutely normal? Not absolutely normal, no. Completely and completely confused. Confused? Yes. We've never eaten anything, never tasted anything, never touched anything, never smelled anything. What right have you seen in your life? Mm. But you are. Well, apparently, yes. But I'd like to know what the hell's been going on. Clive was a, an outstanding musician. He would take his work very, very seriously. At the same time, he loved music so much that he just really threw himself into it totally. Clive was a musician of enormous integrity. He was the world's expert on, uh, on Lassus, one of the three or four great composers of, uh, of the Renaissance. And he also worked a great deal in contemporary music and was chorus master of the London Symphonietta, which is Europe's foremost group. Music flowed out of him whether he's singing, or playing, or conducting. Clive Waring, through a cruel twist of fortune, shows us how fundamental consciousness and memory are to our lives. with a headache. Clive came home one day and said he had a very bad headache. The headache didn't lift, it didn't respond to analgesics. By the fourth day, he developed quite a high fever. And on the evening of the fourth day, for a little while, he forgot his daughter's name. By the fifth day, he was very delirious. Well, Clive suffered from viral encephalitis, which has led to the damage of the left and the right temporal lobes, plus a good portion of the left frontal lobe. Now, the temporal lobes contain a structure called the hippocampus, which we know is implicated in memory function. And in Clive, it has almost certainly been completely destroyed in both sides of his brain. And it's this that's primarily responsible for his severe memory impairment. In addition, the damage to his frontal lobes also causes a number of additional memory problems, which are manifest mostly in terms of him repeating himself a lot and generally showing um, emotion, highly emotional behavior. Clive's world now consists of a moment with no past to anchor it and no future to look ahead to. It is a blinkered moment. He sees what is right in front of him, but as soon as that information hits the brain, it fades. Nothing makes an impression. Nothing registers. Everything goes in perfectly well because he has all his faculties, his intellect is virtually intact and he perceives his world as you or I do. But as soon as he's perceived it and looked away, it's gone for him. So, it's a moment-to-moment -moment consciousness, as it were, a, a time vacuum. And everything before that moment is completely void and he feels as if he's awakening afresh the whole time. Beautiful, marvelous tickets. It's fantastic. I wake the first time. It's the first person I've seen. It's very nice to meet you. How has it been? It's been about two and a half years now. Imagine one night, two and a half years now. That's what it's been like. I've not seen a thing until now. 
Not even anything before the skin. Mm -hmm. I give him the impression of being constantly awake. Not true. He always thinks he's been awake for about two minutes. And that's why he looks at his watch all the time to record it. To record the fact, ah, I've woken up. I'm, this is an important event, therefore I will write it down in my diary. So he writes, 11.54 a.m. I am now completely awake for the first time. And he underlines first time. Patience begins, because he's always playing patience. And the whole diary, every page, is a succession of entries saying almost the same thing. A first awakeness. And when he goes back and looks at his own entries, he doesn't acknowledge that they are genuine. He says, he knows it's his handwriting, but as far as he's concerned, he was unconscious when he wrote them. So he, he quite often, he'll, he'll score out what he's written before. And so his life is an ever-repeating moment of first awakening. The strongest thing in his life, I believe, and his diaries bear that out, is his love for me. And that's absolutely raw. And each time I walk into that room, it is as if it's the first time he's seen me for years. Good heavens <laughs> Hello. Are you surprised to see me? Well, the first time I've seen anybody at all. The first person I've seen. You have not seen me before this no. morning? No, I haven't. I have been here. <laughs> so how are you feeling this morning? I'm conscious for the first time. It's the first time I've seen anybody at all. You've not been conscious before? No. I've been here before this I morning. I haven't seen you before. No, you haven't? No. I've not seen anything at all before. I've been completely blind the whole time. You don't remember me arriving at all? No. No, I don't remember that you were arriving at all. No. no idea at all. But do you know who I am? Or do you kiss all women like that? I have <laughs> you know I love you. I don't kiss anybody Yes, else. I do know. Mm. I do know. You've written them all over your diary. Look. Mm. I bet you that if I look to see what you've written, you haven't mentioned me on that page. No. You've mentioned me on this page. My first thought, I adore Deborah for eternity. That's right. People's entries in the diary are rubbish. What does that mean? No, I don't. Did you write that? I've never conscious of conscious of it at all, no. They're showing it me now for the first time. But it's, is it your handwriting? Yes, it is. But I know nothing about it at all. So how do you think it got there? I don't. I presume the doctor don't know. But you must... No, have... I haven't. You said it to me, please, let not say. Sorry. When I say no, I mean exactly that. I just... haven't seen the book at all till now. No, I'm, all I've said... No, that's mean. That means I haven't seen it, I have no knowledge of it at all. That's all. There's no knowledge of that book at all. It's entirely right. new to me. But, but just use your intelligence, and let's have a comment with your intelligence. But you put... Who would put that if I... I don't know, but no, I... no, 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 no... Oh, for heaven's sake, use your intelligence, for heaven's sake. I haven't read this in the bloody thing. I'm sorry, don't well, use your intelligence. Clive gets extraordinarily angry, and who wouldn't? Because here you're not dealing with somebody who is demented, who is oblivious, who is gaga. You are dealing with a perfectly lucid, highly intelligent man who has been robbed of knowledge of his own life, and he feels deeply humiliated to be put in that position. Very, very frustrated that he can't grasp What's wrong with him? Because even as you're telling him, he's forgetting the previous sentence. 